And now let's get to that. Um, there was an atta- uh, an assassination attempt. So the, the worst thing you could do to a person is to assassinate them, to just kill them and rob them of their right to life. And the U.S. government plotted to kill Julian Assange. Can you kind of walk us through? And was that Mike Pompeo? Was it was it? And why why does he hate? Why does he have such venom against Assange? Where's that rooted from? Well, I think he's been embarrassed. The U.S. government has been embarrassed by a lot of the WikiLeaks exposures. Uh, And basically what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have done um, have has basically exposed U.S war crimes um, and crimes by the the CIA, Um, you know, illegal renditions, the outrages at Guantanamo, um, and, you know, uh, Pompeo presided over over the CIA that that was carrying out these horrific acts. I mean, the, the... the, 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 let me get give you the timeline because it's actually um if it wasn't so sick it would be hilarious um essentially what what happened was um on december 21st of 2017 i believe um julian was meeting with his attorneys in the embassy and a um because of the uh, there were still friendly uh people within the ecuadorian government even though the president was was being difficult at that time um, and uh, the Ecuadorian government assisted or tried to assist uh, Julian by issuing, first of all, they gave him citizenship of Ecuador, and then they granted him a, or tried to grant him diplomatic status. And the idea being that that would enable Julian to um, leave the embassy and go to a more friendly jurisdiction without being at risk of arrest, because the US, UK government would have had to ref- uh, respect the diplomatic status. Now, this is December 21st of 2017, within hours of that meeting, we later learned, a uh, international arrest warrant was issued. So the CIA obviously heard that conversation in real time. Uh, And uh, the following day, the uh, US ambassador to Ecuador met with the Ecuadorian foreign minister and told them that the, the Amer- America knew about the plot that the UK government had been told not to respect diplomatic status, and um, essentially it, it it foiled the plot, which was supposed to have taken the uh, you know the ability of of um, Julian to leave. Uh, it was supposed to be Christmas Day uh, on uh, twenty seventeen. But what's what's interesting about the Pompeo link to the whole thing, and really just sick, is that in his memoir, which was published in January of twenty twenty three. Um, he literally he specifically says that, and this is on page 227, if anyone wants to check it out, but he specifically says that on December 23rd, 2017, he was perusing the CIA guidelines on extrajudicial killings, which is just mind blowing. So we have a situation where um, Julian's, uh, you know, trying to get help to get out of the embassy by both a, a friendly friendly people in the Ecuadorian government and his attorneys who were helping to help him do that legally. And um, the US government was not only stopping that from happening and by leaning on its you know allies, um, but uh, contemplating, and this is Mike Pompeo contemplating how to assassinate him. And then this was this this was actually verified in the um amazing reporting by Zach Dorfman and uh, Michael Isikoff in Yahoo News uh, in late 2021 um, that verified that there was a CIA CIA plot to kidnap or kill Julian. And um, there were 30 uh, uh, government operatives that were invested, that were interviewed anonymously, most of them in the course of that reporting. So it, it's very strong. It's very strong evidence that there's been a real personal vendetta right. um, by Mike Pompeo. Is there any sort of legal consequence for that behavior, for attempting to or plotting to kill somebody? I mean, is there, it just seems like, how could they just get away with this? I mean, we know they tried to do it. Is there anything that could be done? Well, the, if we had a government who cared, it could be. I mean, the, the real problem in this case, I mean, first of all, there, there should be a, a congressional committee. Um, the, the, all of this has been reported to Adam Schiff as head of the Intelligence Committee. And there's been no action that I've heard of. Um, it's it, it, the problem that we really have. I mean, we have the, the problem we really have is that the CIA's character assassination of Julian, which goes back to you know 2011, um, 
right after the um, Chelsea Manning uh, exposures, uh, which is really what this case is all about and what he's in jail for, um, have they've so succeeded in destroying his his reputation that nobody cares. And the, the mainstream media isn't clamoring over this. They're doing everything they can to distance themselves from him, even though uh, this is so dangerous. This will be such a dangerous precedent. It already is. It's having a chilling effect on yeah. national security journalists who don't want to end up sitting uh, sitting in jail. So I'm sure they don't expose the kind of war crimes that they may be uncovering. I mean, it just seems like um, I, it seems like Mike Pompeo should be in jail. I mean, I I don't know what what I mean. He really should be sitting in jail. And it's it's outrageous that and what's also really outrageous is that Australia doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. You know, why aren't they saying, hey, why'd you try to kill one of our citizens? Don't they care about their citizens? Do they or do they, are they kowtowing to the U.S. government more than they care about one of their own? I mean, it's just this is so bizarre. There's a really uh, there's a lot of support for Julian in Australia. And because of that, the Australian government has made some gestures towards trying to get uh, the U.S. to consider um, dropping the charges or dropping the extradition. Um, but uh, it hasn't happened. So um, it, it, there's a lot of speculation about whether they um, I mean, honestly, almost every country in the world kowtows to the U.S. government and um, uh Australia is incredibly uh, dependent on the U.S. to help with its own uh, defenses, and uh, that's much more important uh, than anything else. So we really have a lack of political will here. It's not that there isn't any recourse. It's that there isn't anyone who um, cares to tr put pull the trigger on it. Yeah, and I think of the American media. I mean, one of the problems is that they've, um, you know, there's a lot of suspicion that the American media is also infiltrated already by security state, you know, CIA and already kind of embedded into the the media. There's a lot of evidence of that. Um, and so the media is remaining silent on this. And and actually now what we're seeing is the media helping the government. I mean, we just watched the New York Times help with uh, exposing uh, Teixeira, right, who who leaked documents and they went and did the investigation. It's like they did the jobs, the job for the FBI or the CIA. Uh, so they've really, they're not only not saying anything and in bed potentially with these, with the security state, but then they're also now acting on behalf of them uh, at this point in, in uh, with where we're at with all of this. I mean, it's just, so what are they claim? So where are we at now with Julian well, Assange? Could, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it goes back to the weapons of mass destruction. I mean, it isn't even the, the supposed liberal media backing up the, Democratic government. I mean, they 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 they've been in bed uh, for the longest time. The traditional corporate media with uh, the security services, yeah. and some of it may be, you know, it's because they the the national security journalists want to um, don't want to irritate their sources. I mean, there could be a number, you know, but I I suspect it has a lot more to do with corporate media interests being aligned with the right corporate interests right. elsewhere. 